Hello everyone. I thought I would do a quick update on the uh, how the latest teardrop foamy <laughs> composite trailer is coming along. Here I've made another version of a slot cutter. This time I used two by fours cut down in height in this area and that area and my straight edge same one I've been using for years to be able to cut the slots I run the slot the saw through this area this piece is a leftover piece from one of the sides that didn't quite work out because of the uh, melting of the styrofoam from the bit I was using. But at any rate, I just use this piece to push the foam pieces through. And it also, when you get down to the end of the, the last cut, allows an extra little bit of support for the saw. And the saw is just a Makita circuiter saw. I guess I could uh, put a piece in. Sorry about it. Now, as you can see, this piece of foam is slightly undercut, so I probably won't be using it, at least not for what it should have been for. But that quarter inch gap is a result of the fact that a nine foot piece the styrofoam is actually eight foot, 11 and three quarters. And then when you cut it in half and lose another eighth of an inch because of the width of the saw blade, you have something that you can't make even close to 54 inches high. If I'd have known that, I probably would have reduced the height of the buck by about a quarter of an inch. At any rate, the quarter inch could just be filled with glue. Or I could even put a little spray foam in there if I wanted to. I don't know, I haven't decided. The styrofoam is, is expensive. I mean, for nine, four feet by nine foot sheets of Suprema, I guess, yeah, Suprema. In Canada, the last place I got it at was $69.99 a sheet. So, right now, I have three sheets left, which I'll make into 54 inch pieces. And then I have another piece that will only be useful if I decide to make another four by eight teardrop, which I might do. People seem to like it, but it's really kind of irritating when you get something that should be good enough to get two pieces out of for this for the top and bottom and get one piece and use one piece for each, each of the sides, which did work out. I made the sides eight foot 11, so a nine foot piece works quite well for that. At any rate, I have glued on the first piece of styrofoam. It's on the back, and as you can see, I have the same problems that I had with the other trailer that had flat, flat back on it, is that you have to add extra bracing to get it in nice and tight. But what I decided to do 
instead of putting the joint in the middle and going both ways I decided to put the joints in the corner which I think will aid in the strength of the rear wall and also if I wanted to cut a door out of this then it's all going to be one piece. Now the form is wrapped with Phylon right now as you can see the waviness here I couldn't get it to stretch right around tight you see this gap here once I get the waves to go all the way around that gap will tighten up I also have to put a piece of tape underneath so that when I glue the styrofoam it doesn't glue itself solid to the buck uh, I got some wider straps. I got some three two inch wide straps. Spread the load and lessen the chance of having little valleys develop. Uh, this is dried overnight. So what I'll be doing is releasing all the straps and then I'll work the waves all the way around to the other side. And then I'll have to screw on a couple of boards, probably three boards to hold it in tight on the flat portion there. But uh, the first piece of foam is always the hardest to, to get on because everything's loose and you're fighting to get your straps around but now that the first piece is on, everything will go quite smoothly from here on in, I hope. <laughs> Another thing about styrofoam, is, as you can see right here, it's thicker there than it is here. And this stuff, in most areas, it's one inch, it's, it's called one inch styrofoam, but in most areas, it's bigger than an inch. I mean, I could show you with my micrometer, but take my word for it. The black styrofoam I used, it's actually XPS styrofoam, but the black styrofoam I used on the previous trailer And since I had that uh, laying around, I cut a gauge out of the black styrofoam and the previous uh, phylon that I used. And the black styrofoam is slightly narrower than the white styrofoam. So that's going to result in some extra work sanding off the high spots before I put the outer layer on. So that's something to consider if you're building a composite trailer or a foamy or something. Check the thickness of your styrofoam. Just because it says it's two inches thick doesn't mean it's going to be two inches thick. It might be an inch and seven eighths. It might be two and an eighth. <laughs> and there's places on this stuff that from one end of the sheet to the other it goes in and out, gets thicker and gets thinner. Everything manufactured nowadays seems to have a lot of flaws in it. Pieces of OSB board that I bought wasn't even square. The ends were out by an eighth of an inch in places. It also wasn't fully eight feet long. It was eight, seven foot, 11 and seven eighths long. For some reason, they think they can just give you, take the saw cut away from you instead of away from them when they cut this stuff into four by eight sheets. Like I say, the nine foot styrofoam, 
eight foot eleven and, seven, and three quarters. The only thing that is consistent is Phylon. It's always precise. Anyway, here's the, a piece of the previous trailers. You can see the black styrofoam. And this Phylon on the previous trailer is slightly thinner. Uh, all that was available was the 063 of an inch thickness. But, although it's slightly heavier, I'm thinking that that's going to give a big increase in the strengths of the structure. Maybe to the point where you could actually sit on top of the roof with a lawn chair, which I didn't recommend you do with the other trailer. Anyway, i got to get back to work. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all the people that subscribe to my channel. Have a good day.